Nature's Flow, written by Wu Myung. Prologue. The days of playing my willow pipe, the days of laying near the stream, dreaming about my future, have all become a longing now that I am living absent of self. Everyone has a dream that they have had since long ago, and they are all ones of hope. They still have hopes for those dreams, thus preventing them from doing the things they should. They do not realize the futility of a life that is lived on those dreams. It is only after waking up from their dreams that they would know how pointless those dreams are. So do not blame life for such futility, boast that you have a lot, or sigh that you have nothing. Life is a sweet dream that lasts only for a night. But because man is unable to harbor hope in the absence of dreams, his life becomes a continuance of them. Sad days have passed, and I harbor nothing. I am already living a life which exists but does not exist. So no matter what people may say, I am one who is no longer of myself. Because I live, I am me. I exist, but I do not. I do not exist, but I do. Existence and non-existence are one. My mind can see non-existence. But because there is no one else in this world who has the mind of non-existence, I sink into loneliness, for I alone am able to see and know this. Perhaps it is because I like the ones who are lost. I like people who are decent and humane. I like ordinary people. I know that a person who stands out is unfortunate. When I was merely a student seeking the way, my only wish was to be more enlightened than others. But now I am overwhelmed by the weight of this mission that has been placed upon me by the universe. The mission to truly save mankind. The enormity of this duty worries me, but I am of no mind. My mind has run off somewhere, and I sit here alone writing these words. Part 1. Poems of Heaven A Poem from the Mind When fog densely covers the world, people are unable to see through it. That the fog and the emptiness are different is a meaningless distinction that man makes. Man is the master of this world, but he lives not knowing this. I can only sigh at this pathetic situation. Experiences are what make life. In it, I could not see past my dirtied clothes. My mind was hidden and so I could not know it. People of the world, listen to my words. That cow standing far out in the field is not a cow. That cow is not a cow, for the cow originally exists within you. You will not find it if you look far. When the winds blew, I would lie in the fields and think about the things that had happened in my life. Life is only full of futility, but I had put so much effort into obeying that futility because I was human. I do not blame it or regret it. I am merely embarrassed of myself for having searched so senselessly. Enlightenment 1 Though one may live in the world sighing, though one may live in the world laughing, they are all futile dreams. Time passes, making everything into a dream and scattering all existent images into pieces. Having lived attached to those images is one's error. Let us go seek out truth. Where could it be? It is not up in the sky. Truth is the place where I have come from, and it is the place where I will return. But people do not know truth and thus are lost. 
I see that truth is the existence that is within the emptiness, and though it may be invisible, in it there is material existence. Truth is the eternal and never-changing self, which everyone must know so that we may be together forever. Last Words I was one who could not die, for I was afraid of death. But now that I have died and have thus become free of all my burdens, I have reached the state of great enlightenment. People do not know that this is possible, and so they live with pain and burdens, while ceaselessly regretting the fact that they live bound to them. A young shepherd with a familiar face passes by, and his faint footsteps remain. But people do not know this, and so they just sigh. It is in the state where there is no life or death that the yellow dandelion that is in bloom is truth, but people live on, not knowing it. Though I count how many go and how many come, though I have laid the foundations in heaven, this place where none go or come, over numerous years, and await the arrival of man, none have come. Arrival into that place is nirvana. It is freedom. I never actually sought out my original non-existence. But now that I have found it, I can see at one glance the heavenly work I must do. Since I have found it, my mind is heaven. From the start I have never lived in the world. Nor have I ever lived at all. I am me just as I am. I have become the infinitely large me. Do. Man lives carelessly, not knowing truth or falseness, but comes to know them by coincidence. Such is none other than the path of Do, truth. Listen, we are not separate, we never were. We are all one. Because we have established the separation between us, you and I exist, and we fail to see we are one. This oneness is truth, and it is the original you. But you have been blinded by your false self, and are thus unable to find your true self. You are of your true self when your body and mind no longer exist. The true self is the original, non-existent self that is the master, which is why you are unable to see your original true self. You live clinging to yourself that was never non-existent or was ever born, and this is why you are absent of yourself. Now that I know, now that I have awakened, I see that Doe is a funny game. Let us wake up together. I have found that truth is quite simple and easy. Naked I am naked and my life is naked too. I lived wearing clothes. I lived behind a mask. Which was more expensive, the clothes or the man? I did not know. Having lived disguising myself with clothes, I became them and thus could not find my naked self. Nirvana. There's nothing to it. To die means to enter Nirvana. Nirvana is when the body and mind die. It is when one abandons his useless clothes but feels no embarrassment in his nakedness. That is Nirvana. I had lived not knowing this. To live life but not be in it, to exist but not be existent in it, means to have entered true nirvana. Self-Discovery I knew not what Do, truth, was, but upon walking its path, I am now on the true way. What is the true way? It is truth. It is what every Buddhist monk has agonized over, the discovery of self. 
People say that we must all discover ourselves, but what is real self-discovery? I see that it is none other than finding who you are. I must teach people that they do not know this. Though I am at my leisure, just humming a tune without a word or a worry, such is my concern of concerns. Adara Dear Adara, you have been born into this world as a human being, but you are a dumb mute. However, you are infinitely good. Dear Adara, who could possibly know your heart? Dear Adara, my eyes well up with tears at the thought of you. There is no way to know why you are in your predicament, you with your good heart. All is well, even if you cannot speak, you with your good heart. All is well, even if you do not speak. What could I do to soothe you of your hurts? Nonetheless, you are happy, for you have not a single care or worry. No matter what people say to you, even though they swear at you, there is no pain to be found in your silent heart. Dear Adada, you could not possibly know my heart. Dear Adada, though you are in that world, I will make sure to save you. Eternality is salvation. Eternality is salvation. Many a times you have cursed the day you were born as a human being. The pain in your heart must be very great. Dear Adada, I can see that you have a lot of regrets and unfulfilled desires in your heart, but your will to live purely is infinite. In my heart, I have become you, and can thus feel your heart. My heart cries. Do you wish to live forever in a pure world? Do you wish to live forever as a decent human being? Do you long for it? You live without the love that exists, and even without the love that does not exist, you live on silently, accepting everything as being fate. Thus, you are Buddha. You are compassion. Your mind will live in heaven, and you will live in heaven. You and I were never strangers. Cattle even the young cowboy who feeds his cattle has become so worn by the city and its civilization that he cannot find his cattle. He says he tends to them, when in fact he does not know what cattle are. The cowboys of the old days were good at finding cattle, but they have long since passed away. It is only by the stories handed down through the generations that the key to searching out cattle remains. One can find cattle, but only if he has seen them. Cheeky bulls just sit quietly and calmly, eyeing those who search them out with pity. Those bulls do not care whether or not they are being sought after, but just remain as they are. Whether he stands in green pastures or at the edge of the field, the one who is good at finding cattle holds the reins tightly in his hands. Human Life 1 If you were to ask me where human life comes from, I would answer that life neither comes nor goes. If you were to ask me how to live well, I would answer that there is only one way to do so, and that is to become a saint. If you were to ask me how to become successful, I would tell you that you must eliminate yourself. If you were to say that man is born into this world for no reason other than only to undergo pain and hardships, I would tell you that because he is human, his hardships and sorrow do not exist. If you were to ask me how to get to heaven, I would tell you that I have the key. 
If you were to ask me of heaven's tidings, I would answer you without hesitation. If you were to ask me why we live, I would tell you that a life in which we live together is human life. That the life we live together, you and me, in heaven is our life. One's Burdens One must shoulder burdens. One must shoulder burdens if he is not of nature's flow. One shoulders burdens because he defies the laws of heaven. One is good at shouldering one's burdens. What one knows are all his burdens. He is under the false impression that he has wisdom, but what he has is nothing more than burdens. Man teaches man knowledge, but what he is doing is putting a burden on another person's shoulders. One would have to shoulder nothing if he knew nothing, if he had nothing, and if he himself were no more. Man carries his own burdens, unwilling to be free of them. He acts superior even though he knows nothing about departures or arrivals, or existence and non-existence. Though it is a non-existent life, he lives thinking it is real. He lives bound to it, trembling with anxiety, anger, and greed. But he does not try to break free from it. Instead, he carries all of his burdens in his attempt to having everything. Youth Youth is a time filled with endless dreams. Youth is a time filled with unlimited beauty. Youth is full of boundless love, and though their youth may fade and they may grow old, people will continue on as they are. Youth is youthfulness. That they live unbound to youth is because they do not know of its departure or arrival. In the distant state in which there is no youthfulness in youth nor any aging, one is silent even if there are blues, yellows, or blacks. He does not think about youth or old age. To not look back upon the youth that has passed but to keep walking on is the flow of nature. So do not dwell on your youth. Do not boast or speak of the glorious days of your youth. There was your youthfulness that once existed and the love that you once had but they have all become mere delusions and dust. Husband and Wife A couple should be of one mind in order to be husband and wife. A couple should have no distance between them in order for them to be husband and wife. A couple should not try to possess each other's minds. A couple should not fight or have any expectations of one another. A couple should soothe each other of their scars. A couple should not cry or laugh. A couple should care for one another. A couple should laugh in the good times and the bad. A couple may get angry at each other, but they should not own it. A couple may fight, but it should not be a fight. A couple may laugh, but it should not be laughter. A couple may love, but it should not be love. A couple that has truly departed from all of these things is a true husband and wife. Childish Life On days when the wind blows, on days when the rain pours, I sing and dance, I sing and laugh about this one and only life. Life is great. Life is wonderful, but when changes occur in their lives, people become very concerned about them. They become sad and they cry. The heart which cries is full of sorrow. The heart which laughs is full of joy. Listen, can you understand my will? Can you understand my thoughts? Can you understand my heart? 
Though life may be swallowed by joy, though life may be swallowed by sorrow, let us sing and sing. Let us sing that joy is life. On the days when the wind blows, on the days when the rain pours, people of the world become sad. Though they have been given life, people are childish. They are childish to the utmost. Wanderer The wanderer has grown accustomed to this foreign land. He is bound to the land due to his love for it. The same can be said for life, and that man has a love for life, a love he cannot become free of. Man lives on humanly love. Creations live on the love of the universe. For sure, the whole of creation is wondrous. Where the wanderer came from is unknown. Where he will go is undecided. Today he is, and tomorrow he will be a drifting wanderer. You will come to understand his loneliness when you understand the worldly attachments and possessions do not exist in life. There are many of us living in this world, but I have yet to find anyone who is not living in it. I am the only one who is living outside of the world. As I hear the outcries of those living in the world, a sigh escapes me. Solitude 1 Though a familiar face is walking on the street, people just look at him as he passes by. They do not recognize this person who is from heaven, and so he, with his familiar face, remains silent. Everyone sees me and everyone knows me, but even though I tell them that I am from heaven, no one seems to know me. Perhaps this is only natural, since it's only just recently that I have arrived. Nevertheless, I alone walk on in my solitude. There is no one who understands what I am feeling. Dream 1 Many a wanderer exists in the world, but there is no one who thinks or says that the life he lives is futile. There are those who clap their hands and laugh, but they too feel heartache when sorrow finds them. However, not a single person knows that life is just a futile dream. People say that there is no one who could possibly teach them anything that they do not already know. And so they refuse to learn, for they think they know it all. Thus they live their lives as they please. I tell them that life is a silent dream, and that they should lead lives that are valuable. But sure enough, no one listens. They just want to sit back and wait for everything to go according to their wishes. They are like thieves, ignorant of what is what. They stand there with suspicion in their eyes. City Dweller The one whose long golden hair blows in the wind. The one who blinks his dark eyes without a word. Even the one who sighs for he could not fulfill his will. Their departures would be instantaneous. In their solitude, people gaze upon the moon, sing songs and recite poetry when moonlight flows calmly. The city is full of lively people. They live happily without worries, bound to themselves, as well as life's trivialities which they have created. It is only when they are struck with worries that they search for themselves. People live adapting to their environment, but there is a limit to what man can do. Even the ones we envy take their own lives in an instant. Without a clue, people live their lives in this world where they can neither laugh nor cry. Such is human life. Parting. 
People dislike partings. Some partings are absent of reluctance or regrets. There are partings in which one has to say farewell to a person he should not, only to live pent up with heartache. To part with one who has helped you and loved you is indeed heartbreaking. But out of all others, man has a mind in which partings are sad and full of grief. The most important thing in the world for people is to eat and live, and so they scatter here and there in pursuit of this, only to be left with heartbreak, and thus becoming a heartache to one another. They are never able to forget their love, they bury it in their hearts, and live their lives in utmost longing. Though the world is not perfect, there were loving people here and there. It is on the warmth of love that man lives. Thus, it is heartbreaking that the world has become a place where people do not know each other, only their own selves. Cloud One If you travel far away in a cloud, you will find that no one exists in the cloud. Though that non-existence is the master, you search that non-existence. Best be on your way. Make haste. Do not give even a sideward glance, for the cloud is where only non-existence dwells. It is due to longing that I created the world. Do not be envious of me that I am in the cloud. Do not be envious of me in that I created the cloud. Do not be envious of me in that I make its existence possible. I am without an image, but there is nothing that I am not. There is no one in the world who knows the me that is without an image. I am the cloud, but I do not hide. I am on the cloud, but I do not hide. I make possible for the cloud to float, but I do not hide. It is pathetic that none of you know me. You boast that you are the lord of all creations, but it is meaningless. Rain Rain falls from the sky. Its droplets must hit the ground in order to make sounds. It is through me that those raindrops come. Whether it is raining or snowing, I remain unchanging. Though everything may change, my image remains the same. The rain you ask for and the rain you shun does not come or go, yet people are sensitive to it. It is out of existent love that the whole of creation comes like the rain, and then leaves like the rain. But people view me only as rain. Such is without a doubt false. I wish that people could not see me as rain, but just see. It is important to know the futility of life. People are wretched indeed because even though all creations will disappear as a whole, people differentiate them and each other. The rain has nowhere to go now. Wind 1 The wind is something that comes out of nowhere. People know the wind but they never stop to think about what it is. The wind fills the universe, but those who know what it is are too few. When I tell them that the wind is man and man is the wind, they just tilt their heads in confusion. But for sure, human life comes and goes like the wind. Upon seeing it from the world, I know that life is only full of futility Human life is like flowing water, but man lives clutching it, unwilling to let it go. 
If he were to let his futile life loose into the wind, what will remain is the wind. If that wind were to become him, and he made his way throughout the universe, then people of the world would envy him. But people cannot see the wind, and this saddens my heart without limit. Earth One Upon the earth is where life is lived. Upon the earth is where creations live. Upon the earth is where many images exist independently. Upon the earth is where many memories exist. Upon the earth is where life cries. Upon the earth is where man enjoys himself. Upon the earth is where joy, anger, sorrow, and pleasure exist, but man lives in sorrow. Upon the earth is where many and unexpected things occur. Upon the earth is where fantasies and dreams exist. Upon the earth is where man is born and where he dies. Upon the earth is where creations are born and where they die. Creations exist in the world because the earth exists, but humans know neither what the earth is nor what it does. Though it is without an image, upon the earth is where there is the divine doe, truth or the way, that gives life to all things. Anything and everything is brought forth by the earth. People do not know that the earth is the mother of all creations. People do not appreciate the earth. People do not know, but the earth knows everything. People very rarely know that heaven is earth, earth is man, earth is heaven, heaven is man, man is earth, and earth is heaven. Those of you living a sad life, I beseech you, be as virtuous as me. Pitiable beings, I beseech you, be as virtuous as me. I live having let go of all wishes or expectations, but you live wanting everything. Such is the difference between you and me. Heaven, Man, and Earth Heaven, Man, and Earth are one. They do not exist separately from one another. Heaven, man, and earth are one. But people do not know this and are thus lost. People live in their delusions because they have been born into this world as human beings, and consequently they think they exist. People live in this world with their clever minds, assessing things for themselves, and living only for themselves. But because such a way of living is not of nature's flow, they experience nothing but hardships. Everyone comes to this world together, but while some live well, others are not so fortunate. Thus their complaints and heartaches are endless, which is why out of heaven, man, and earth, man is trouble. Love Love is endlessly peaceful. Love is endlessly understanding. Love is something that only humans have. Love is about giving what you have. Love is about humans loving humans. Love is about sharing goodness with others. Love is about showing mercy to others. Love is about giving everything to the people of the world. It is about giving what you have to others. Love is about speaking for those who have no words. Love is about making it possible for the deaf to hear. Love is about being loyal to the ones you love. Love is about giving the whole of your heart. 
Love is about being of one mind even when you and another are not together. Love is about showing a warm gesture even to those who are just passing by. Love is about showing uncalculated kindness. Love is about longing those you miss. Love is about treating loved ones with love. Love is to give to others if they are wanting. Loving people live in a loving world, so they treat each other with love. And because the people of the world treat each other with love, the dark clouds of anger are lifted, and they care for one another. At the sight of the world and all of its creations living on love, I jump for joy. No one in the world has been left behind. The world has always been a place where there is no distinction between you and me, and such a world is indeed a great place to live in. The Sound of Wind Chimes The wind chimes of heaven ring leisurely, but people do not know this, and so they look to the sky and sigh. Listen, listen, I say to you all that life in heaven does not exist separately from life on earth. What is truly valuable is the life you live on the earth with each other's love. People are bound to their bodies, and so they childishly think that the lives they are living are everything. However, the place where everyone has come from is the universe. Its body is all of you and so all of you are one and the same. Since you live your own lives in the world, a world where the distinction between you and me exists, but love does not, and since your lives are not the will of heaven, man, and earth, what you are doing is seeking to do nothing more than satisfy your meaningless attachments. A life that is of nature's flow is not a life that is lived only for oneself. Nature's flow is about living together. Rite for the Dead Rites are performed in order to send dead souls to heaven. Dead souls live here on the earth unable to pass on into the other world due to the karma they had gained while they were alive. They still live on with worries, regrets, unfulfilled desires, and greed those poor, senseless, dead souls. Allowing them to let go of everything, and then sending them to heaven is what a rite for the dead is about. They lived ignorant of what was what while they were alive, and even after having died, they know not what death is. They just continue to think that they are still their living selves, such poor souls. Thus, they are sent to the new heaven through the right. Truly blessed are the souls that enter into heaven, for their unclean minds have been cleansed by the divine beings. Before, they did not know where heaven was, but those born as ancestors, who were lucky enough to meet the right descendants, are now off to heaven, and thus their happiness knows no bounds. Thank you. Thank you, for my pain is no more. I will pray for you. I will pray that you may receive the blessings of heaven. Here is where the new heaven is, and it is a wonderful place to live indeed. Raising you has been very rewarding, so please be well, my descendant. Please be well. Living a person who has experienced the bloodiness of the world detests that bloodiness, just as a person who has experienced poverty detests poverty. It is common for man to experience hardships in life, but man wishes to have no worries. He lives not knowing that everything in this world consists of worries. It is common that man not know the future. Everyone tries to know it but they live unable to see or sense the future. 
life is joyful when it is not life. Likewise, there is no point in knowing the future. I beseech you all, do not live bound to anything, but break free from pain, sadness, from everything. Do not create humanly delusions, but live following nature's flow. Return to nature's flow. Kingdom of Heaven Listen, although you and I are living in the world together, I am living in the Kingdom of Heaven, while all of you are living in the human world. Though we are living similar lives, which seems like they are no different from one another, I do not live in the world, while all of you do. Living in truth is different from living in falseness which is why I intend to guide you to the true kingdom so that all of you may live as truth. But none of you listen to my words. Instead, you wait for a savior to appear from the void, and you think that a land exists there. However, there is no savior in the void or heaven, for the land of God is the place that is existent. I originally came from heaven, I lived and then came again from heaven, but people are not recognizing me, which is something that they should be lamenting. Truth 1 Truth, come out. Truth, show yourself. Truth, make yourself heard. People did not know truth and so they were lost. They did not know what truth was, for they lived in a world that was not true. And though they may have sought it out, there was no teacher to teach them. Truth had lain well hidden. Now truth has been found. Now anyone can find truth. Now anyone can see truth. People can now see that they had been living as falseness in a false world. But people do not try to find truth. They think that truth will come and save them. Truth must be sought out in order to be found. Truth cannot be found in that which is not truth. This truth is the truth that everyone has been waiting for. It is the truth that everyone in the world has waited desperately for. It is the truth that everyone has thirsted for. But even though the real truth has come, people are used to looking for truth somewhere else. Thus, truth is just pacing back and forth, speechless. Stranger A familiar face is walking over into the yonder. But because we are so used to seeing him, we do not realize that he is a heavenly being. Due to their ignorance, people think that the heavenly being is a person who has come from the sky. But when one is completely absent of his self, he becomes heaven. And when he returns from heaven, he exists. Thus, it is he who is the heavenly being. It seems no one is able to understand what this means, though. People expect his image to be different. When will they grow up and understand? The heavenly being who you think about when you close your eyes, and the heavenly being who you think about when you open your eyes is among you. All the more reason why you do not know him. People are too childishly ignorant to know that this person is truly the savior. Heavenly Being I have come from heaven. No one knows me. I am originally heaven. I exist in the world in human form, but no one knows me. I had lived a worldly life and then returned from heaven, but no one knows me. 
Religions have said that I would return in a cloud from heaven as Yolsukja and as the Maitreya, but no one knows me. I alone know the will of heaven. The being that everyone in this world tearfully awaits is the same as a human being, but not. He is the universe. Unless you understand this will of heaven, you will become a lost child for all eternity. Heaven has come to this world, but people live in the human world, while I alone live in heaven. When will it be that people understand the will of heaven? Knowing and not knowing Man does not know that in the state where familiar faces join hand in hand and sing songs of truth, man is not man. Thus, no other creature in the world could be more ignorant than man. It is funny how neither the people at the institute where I used to work, nor my own family members know. They do not know what life is what a divine being is, what heaven is, or what the universe is. They think about nothing and just go on with their lives. Whether I come or go, I have always remained as I am since the beginning. But people see me as being human. They do not know where I have come from or where I will go. Heaven Heaven has no limit. Heaven is silent. There are no humans in heaven. There is nothing in heaven. Heaven is as you see it. Heaven, man, and earth are not separate, but because they distinguish them, people are too ignorant to know me. Heaven remains as it is eternally, but man creates heaven in heaven. Though it possesses not a single thing in this world, heaven does not blame or complain that it has or has not. People do not know that everything in the world is a dream, and so they seek out reality from within their dreams. People living in this world do not know the flow of the universe, of heaven. Heaven is boundless and silent. Heaven is as it is. But people create their own heavens, unwilling to learn this order of heaven. Everything that exists in the world is no different from that which exists in heaven. But people do not know this, so they are lost. There is no one who has entered into heaven. Every human being that is visible is already in heaven. But people live deceived, constantly in search of it. Heaven is not far away. Where you live now is heaven. But you will not find it, for you look to the sky in search of it. Ignorant people, senseless people, you are lost because you do not know that you and I are one. No wonder you are unable to find me, for you try to fit me to you. The most valuable thing in the world is the whole of creation. The noblest thing in the world is the whole of creation. But people feel anxiety, for they do not know that all creations are both one and the same. It seems I cannot persuade them that anxiety and delusions exist only for those whose selves exist. Upon seeing me and my unchanging eternality, people have given me many a name and have worshipped me. It is not such worship I enjoy but that people know we are all of one body. What I enjoy is nature's flow. Page 
patience. I have come from the place where I do not come or go, in order to live on the earth where man and all creations live. Upon living here, I have come to realize that there is a lot of pain. I experience great difficulty because no one is following the flow of nature, but I remain silent. I sigh, for no one seems to know that the heavenly being and I are one and the same. I, like everyone else, am born into this world and will someday depart. But people only seek to use me, and do not love me. Although this saddens me, I am silent. When will these childish and ignorant people finally come to know me? When will they finally come to know that heaven, man, and earth are one? Though I may grow weary from having to wait, wait, and wait some more, I must be patient, for I am the one that knows nature's flow. The Life You Lead If you were to ask me what this life is that you are living, I would tell you that there is no truth in that life. If you were to tell me that the life you are leading is one of truth, I would tell you that your burdens are heavy. If you were to tell me that the life you are leading is exciting, I would tell you that you are dreaming an exciting dream within a dream. If you were to tell me that the life you are leading is an exhausting one, I would tell you to let go of your useless greed. If you were to tell me that the life you are leading is nonsensical, I would tell you that there is no such thing as life or death. If you were to tell me that the life you are leading is wrong, I would tell you that it is because you have an attachment and greed for life. If you were to tell me that the life you are leading is savory, I would tell you you have almost reached the true world. If you were to tell me that you are terrified of the life you are leading, I would tell you that you are living well. If you were to tell me that the life you are leading is full of pain, I would tell you to get rid of yourself. If you were to tell me that you are leading a happy life, I would tell you that it is nothing more than dust. If you were to ask me how to live well, I would tell you that you must completely be rid of yourself. If you were to ask me what a life of truth is, I would tell you that a life that is alive is truth, that it is the life truth lives. If you were to ask me to make the life you are leading into that of truth, I would tell you that I have the key. Green Mountains in the days when there were not many people living in the world, every mountain was green. The green mountains that people speak of are the ones in which the trees are lustrous with green. But the green mountains of truth are not those. Green mountains and bald mountains are the same. The term green mountains is one that man has made. An enlightened person deems them to be non-existent. The green mountains of the mind is pure as pure can be, but it is invisible in the eyes of man. When will man be able to find the green mountains? Slash and Burn Farmer He who makes his living off of cultivating fields in the mountains searches far and wide into its rough depths. He will farm the land for consecutive years until the soil becomes infertile. He is a father. After having cultivated the land for a few months alone, 
He brings his family there, and they toil the land together. There they build a new hut for themselves and live together as a family. Wild boars, deer, and pheasants come and eat the grains. These families live together with the creatures of the mountains. They place a large rock, propped up with a wooden plank, and beneath it they put some grains. When the boar trips the prop stick, the rock falls and the boar is crushed underneath. Many a day had passed without any meat on the table, but now they are able to feast for days. The nearest town is 20 kilometers, or perhaps 40 kilometers. The children walk the narrow mountain roads with lightning speed. They plant potatoes, sweet potatoes, and corn, which are their staple foods. These are people who eat the wild greens that they gather from the mountains. They are simple-hearted people, for they have no expectations. With their pure hearts, they live with nature. They have nothing, and so they want nothing. They just live observing the sky and the earth. If they were to be greedy, it would be that they would want the sky to send them rain. But there are those who grow tired of this kind of life. So they come to the city, only to find that they can do nothing else but undertake manual labor jobs, for they are uneducated. They become unhappy, and they come to miss the warmth of the bygone days, and blame the city and its lack of warmth. Though people long for a love in which there exists no distance between them, people use it, which is why there is no love at all. The cultivated fields are all disappearing, the homes that were built beyond the slopes and the homes that line the valleys have all become abandoned. How many years have passed, no one knows, but the land has become thick with weeds. Those who used to live off the mountains have all gone far away to make money. It is a pity that those people have become hardened and have lost their warmth.